We used to play in the nicest sleazies and we had this thing we used to dress up in charity clothes from charity shops uh, and I'd dress up in a sailor suit and all that kind of thing. I think we were averaging about oh, 1993, 94, 95 I reckon we averaged about 100 gigs a year, you know. We scraped together the money to buy a PA, so we thought we could go and just put it in the van and we'd be able to drive about all over the place and play in any pub that would just about pay us enough money for the petrol in the van I have to do it. James, the singer, sort of sauntered up to me afterwards and uh, without making any eye contact said, uh, are you quite into coming along for a bit of a jam or a rehearsal? I said, uh, yeah, of course. Bumped into James and Derek in the in the, a pub called Nice and Sleazy's in Glasgow. I'm, I'm sure the only reason I get into the band, or the main reason I get into the band, was because I had a couple of uh, really good suits that my dad had had made when he was a, a younger man in the 70s. We kept ourselves very busy, and uh, basically on the idea that if you just keep working and doing lots of things, somebody is bound to see you, or you're bound to kind of get recognised by someone in the press or whatever, and it, it makes it all worthwhile. I've always hated drummers that sit at the back and kind of, you know, hold it down. I think Joe Bloggs in the audience would prefer to watch a, a drummer who was having a good time. We played in, in Wales one night and uh, they did a kind of a, an information screen. Our manager went up and got them to type in uh, the band tonight are looking for somewhere to stay. We used to drive up to Perth, Fort William, Oban. If everybody saw us, they wouldn't, you know, whether they liked us or not, they probably wouldn't forget about it. That was the main reason, you know, that we were able to do so many gigs. We did have a good, strong following. Now we've got a lot of freedom to record um, and the approach to the new making this record is very different. We've been working with this sort of curly haired guy called Kev, who's the engineer and uh, he's, he's very up and very up for it and he's a, a fantastic engineer. Imagine you know, one day he'll probably be a producer of God knows who, you know, Steps, Comeback album. <laughs> Past we'd been working with uh, people and influences that maybe found ourselves not compromising so much, but 
maybe diluting what we were originally all about. The way we approach making music in the studio has had to change. We're kind of pushing, pushing our music in a kind of more uh, a different direction completely, I reckon. We're just doing exactly what we want to do and record and the way we want to record it. Uh, I'm not saying we're cutting edge, but if you want something that's different, it's, you've got to kind of embrace uh, some of what's available you know, to the musicians these days, which is basically technology. Alan's very creative with his, his drums and he always has been. Yeah. And he, he's, he's gone away and bought the sampler and the drum machine and learned how to work it all. That's changed the sound of the band completely. And Alan's been pretty much responsible for it. And it's the most enjoyable record I'd say we'd ever made in terms of recording. Derek wrote the lyrics to the song are actually about our manager Jerry and um, it, Derek it, it's basically about Jerry living the easy life and um, waiting for the postman to come and inviting the postman in to have a cup of tea and stuff. Derek's got a fantastic nature, he's a very, it's like a gentle giant, he's a very nice guy. He's kind of spends all his time eating, that's his main kind of thing. He, he'd, have, he'd prefer to have a conversation about uh, the tomatoes in the shop in the high street near the studio than uh, a synthesizer sound. And, uh, you know, if you ask Derek if he's got a good sound, he's more than likely to go reaching into his bag for a packet of hula hoops and say, what about that sound? Mark is a bit like a Jack Russell Terrier. He's kind of small, uh, wiry, um, weird. Uh, but he's not as weird as everyone makes him out to be. Craig is a guy that used, he sort of joined the band uh, last year. He started off as a driver, then he moved on to a roadie, and then he moved on to a percussionist and a member of the band. So I don't know, maybe next this time next year he'll be the singer. Ken's a uh, bit of a sort of playboy figure. He's into music, but it's, he's also into flying his hang glider, and he's very into kind of women and drinking and... Every time a new synthesizer comes out in the music shop in Glasgow, he goes down there and buys it and comes in with this great new sound. Daisy chain around your neck and sunburn on your arm. the church and past the farm, past the farm. Take a walk to the reservoir where we both take off our clothes. No one will see us there. As a band we were really loose, we were like the faces or something, incredibly loose, and I think a lot of people thought we did this on purpose, 
and uh, it didn't do it on purpose at all. I mean, I'm not slagging us off or slagging the guys off, but they're not professionals as in, you know, like Robbie Williams back in band. They're just guy, a bunch of guys that are friends that are in a band. We didn't have any roadies whatsoever. I think that was part of the Supernatural's work ethic, you know. Part miserly Scottish as well, you know, we didn't want to pay anybody. Going from, you know, selling you know, ten or nine, nine or ten um, of our tapes at a gig, you know, would be a really good night and, you know, my goodness, I'm going to be huge, you know, at this rate, to, you know, a you know, number nine album and we'd, we hadn't really, we were just as just cynical and twisted and, and, and all the rest of it and didn't, didn't get into the spirit of it, I don't think. Um, I mean, it's, uh, people kind of go on about recording studios and how difficult they are to sort of master and stuff like that, but I mean, there's not a lot of pressure. Um, well, there is a lot of, well, sometimes there's pressure, sometimes not so much pressure, sometimes I would like some pressure, but I mean, there's uh, I mean, I'm not under any pressure to, to you know, I mean, okay, I'm supposed to be taking care of some of the stuff, that, you know, drum machine samples and stuff like that. and. Uh, Occasionally that gets a bit uh, tricky, um, but I mean, it's, it's, I think it's all about enjoying yourself in the studio really. It's, um, if you're not enjoying yourself and you're sort of feeling strung out about something then I think you shouldn't really be in a band, you should be working in an office or something like that. And uh, you should get um, you know, other people to do it. I don't think making music is all about relaxing and making sure that you're happy with what, what you're trying to do. 